all we're hearing nowadays is 2023 this, 2023 that, man. Fuck all that. What about 2023 animation? Okay, now bear with me. I know I just said fuck all that to everything else, but 2023 in general has been a really good year for media in general, whether it be video games. Where's everyone going? Bingo. Whether it be movies, whatever the fuck else you can think of at this time. But the main spotlight, obviously, because this, this whole channel is fucking with, with animation. But animation! Animation has been the main spotlight of this year, at least for me personally. My goodness gracious, has this been a phenomenal year? Whether it be the likes of the beautiful Spider Verse, that was phenomenal. Or animes like JJK, which have honestly set the bar for animation of this year. So I want to come out here and talk about all these beautiful animations that I have personally seen this year. And hopefully, some that we'll see soon, and some that I have missed out on, and I probably will try to attempt to catch up on it because obviously it's a lot of fucking shows or movies that do eventually come out or just fuck around and just don't watch it. I, I, I don't know it, it just happens to be like that you know just be like that. Oh. Wake up. But first, let's start off with the stuff I've always talked about on this channel, which is one JJK. JJK, you already know, I already have like 80 million views on this channel, but JJK it was genuinely phenomenal and the best it's ever been this season right here. Whether it be the prequel, whether it be the animation itself that's gone off the goddamn charts here, or even just the character development and just me caring about other characters that usually I would never fucking care for. <laughs> With having interesting concepts and introductions that I generally will stay with me for a very, very, very long time. But now going into Spider-Verse, my favorite film of the year, hands down, no debate for me personally. My God, Spider-Verse has been one of the best things I've probably watched, like, ever. Yeah, it's probably my, my, fa my favorite, actually, animated film. I'm waiting for the next one to come out. It's honestly done such a good job. It changed the industry, not once, but twice! It just feels like with Spider-Verse and these two creators right here, when it comes to them both coming together, it feels like there's no limits. The sky is the fucking limit at that point. It's done such a good job with either the character development between films, like, either with my and Gwen or just the amazing introduction of fucking Miguel O'Hara and really just seeing from his perspective of like how bad things get and how things really should be in his opinion even when you don't want to agree with them or even just the amazingness that is Hobie Brown himself even with the way he acts or the way he's fucking animated itself and I wonder how many fucking hours that took but nonetheless Spider-Verse phenomenal from start to end my goat continue to train with American animation real quick I did actually like the Super Mario movie it wasn't like oh my god like this is the best movie ever but it was actually a good start and a good like finally like oh my goodness gracious we actually have a good movie when it comes to like a video game movie i know we do have a few video game movies that are good out there but it's like it's a mario and it has to be good there's no way that could be like actually dog shit or actually terrible you know what i mean monkey okay wait wait hold on now mushroom kingdom here we come Alright, it has issues. Chill out. The only thing I would say, it is a little bit weird seeing uh, Seth Rogen as actual Donkey Kong, but it's so good to see Donkey Kong in general. But I would also say that, surprisingly, Jack Black as Bowser actually is pretty insanely good. And I don't know how, but that pizza song was definitely in a lot of people's heads for the next couple of months. But again, it's a pretty good movie. I do actually suggest to watch it out of any of the video game movies. At least up until that standard, you know what I mean? But up next, we have Free Ren. Free Ren? Oh my goodness, Free Ren. Free Ren was a really, really good and honestly, in my opinion, saving the genre of fantasy because my god, there's not really a lot of options out there. Unless we're talking about ReZero. No, we're talking about Sword Art Online. Uh, anyways, so well, with, Free, with Free Ren, I honestly have a really, really good time with I, I didn't expect me to have so much feels when it comes to a show like Free Ren, but my goodness gracious, they know how to gut punch you multiple times and to, to just not stop. Just, they keep spamming the button of an uppercut or fucking Hadouken like every single two seconds. But at the same time, also make you feel happy for like the next generation or the next people that are out there in this new group that Free Ren is running, right? Basically telling you to look on a brighter side of things and having so many other nuance and other meanings like don't take things for granted live in the here and now it's okay it's fine to make mistakes as long as you keep moving forward it's okay they also got trigger stampede talk about making a fucking comeback in 2023 out of like what i think 1990 or some shit i don't know it, it was sometime in the 90s or something like that or maybe early 2000s that doesn't matter it, it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter but my goodness gracious i've always loved trigon and my goodness gracious they come back with a fucking passion and a fucking punch having trigon be one of those odd examples where you have a whole different reimagining of a show and it's actually done extremely well like in a first show where you have a lot more comedy and you do have a lot of seriousness that that is in there but it takes a little bit of time to get to that point where in this one you get instant answers as well as an extra content to a new lord that was never explored upon in the first one and i don't know if it was split upon in the manga but all i'm saying for the anime the old anime itself then there's a fucking cg in there my goodness gracious the cg is fuego i didn't think cj could actually be this good 
But see, the CGI is just fucking phenomenal in this. They, you have so much expressive shit. Like, it's an actual 2D animation, even though it's not. Maybe we want more shows if they could be just like this in the terms of CGI, then I'm all down for it. I don't really don't care. Just give it to me. Give it to me now. All right, next coming up is Human Resources. Yeah, honestly, I couldn't sit there with a straight face and actually sit there and be like, oh, I actually watched that show. No, I'm not watching that. I'm not watching above that show. Anyways. But you know what? Let me talk about a scary show that I haven't talked about on the channel. It's called Poor Devil, right? I think, I believe it was on Netflix. I had a good time with Poor Devil and not an like, exceptional oh my god time, but it's still, it's still a good time nevertheless. It was sort of basically like a Spanish show that basically gets translated to English and it's a bit weird like, how they translate on the lip flaps. That was a bit of a weird part. Successful acting career, which I never got. The therapist says it's good to say these sorts of things. This is what? I can't get jiggy with this shit. But other than that, I had a, a lot of fun with it when it came to the jokes or whether it came to some of the characters that bounce off of each other. But I would say, like, it it could get better if he has, like, another season or two to, like, really adapt all these characters together and how they really interact with each other. Okay, I make this one completely short and sweet. I think the Clone High reboot is not, not good, good, but I did enjoy some of the jokes that were in there and also probably like the last two episodes. That was the only thing I actually enjoyed from the show, sadly to say. But the original Clone High is fucking phenomenal. I suggest that to like almost anyone. I always, I always have a lot of fun when I watch uh, the original Clone High, but the new one, not so great. It wasn't like, it was just so much like regular millennial shit that just did not necessarily make any sense and it just flat out wasn't funny. It was just any other joke you could probably get from any new, new age show and it's fucking dog shit. Anyways, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, or Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, actually. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is really, really good. I really enjoyed myself seeing a completely different take on the series and sort of expanding upon everything else that wasn't really expanded from beforehand. Making sure almost no stone is unturned in a way or, or, or saying, right? But that only comes to the terms of Ramona, right? Because it's going to be starring Ramona as the main character of the show. So then you sort of go about all of her life, right? And it focuses on her fixing all of her relationships or at least being on a decent standing zone with all of her exes which is a completely different way of going about it but i fucking love it and it's pretty phenomenal now i don't think we're ever pretty much gonna get an animated scott pilgrim versus the world but that's fine that's that's more than fine especially when you get stuff like this and it's so different but actually really good at the same time and also my greedy ass can finally have three different interpretations of scott pilgrim versus the world whether it be the movie the book or the fucking anime series now and also it's probably almost a set to Incentivizing? Holy shit, can I speak English today? Incentivizing you to actually go ahead and read the book, which I highly suggest, or watch the movie, or watch the series, which I also highly suggest. And one thing I'll talk about lastly before I get to shows that I haven't watched that I really did want to watch is fucking Bleach, the comeback king themselves bro i can't believe in 2023 our lord and savior 2023 we're actually able to get the comeback of bleach and how insanely phenomenal it is with some extra changes the extra things added to things that weren't added to the manga because of probably time restraints or they just didn't let kubo actually sit there and fucking write whatever he, the hell he wanted to but but sitting there waiting for every single new episode to come out for bleach was just so phenomenal for me i was, I was just wait there wait there wait there like what's the next episode what's the next episode what's the next episode because they just put you on the edge of every single episode they'll like have a, a good ass fight or a good ass concept that gets introduced or even just seeing conclusions to issues that were there ever since the very beginning of the show you already know this is a bleach stand account that, that's all i have to say is that you already know it's a bleach stand account here and i'll talk about some of the shows that i didn't get a chance to watch and i really did want to watch but i just didn't have the time or like you know not, not patience but like i just didn't have the time for it yeah, yeah, yeah. but nimona i definitely wanted to watch it because i just like the art style itself of nimona and it did look pretty interesting just seeing just a little munchkin running around as like a little demon and it seems like they have pretty good chemistry between the, the knight as well as her herself and then on top of that it just seemed like the setting could be really fun because it seemed like a little bit cyberpunk futuristic as well as the knights in shining armor which i thought was pretty cool then there's the boy and the heron okay future tn here i I don't know why the fuck I said Heron like that. Like, I don't know how to speak. I, I think it's just been too long since I've been fucking editing. Yeah, I did put out a lot of videos this week. Anyways, it's a Studio Ghibli film. I, I don't think I really have to re express myself or why I, I would like to watch it or sort of give it a chance. I probably won't make a video on that. But anyways, let's just go to the last one. The last one I didn't watch that I should have given a chance. And it was sort of my fault because I didn't go to the movie theaters to go watch it. I don't know when streaming services is where it's at. But anyways, it's a new team in T, right? With Mutant Mayhem, I, I shouldn't really express myself. But I will say here, you cannot look me dead in my eyes and tell me that a TMNT product has missed ever. 
This is a load of barnacles. It, it, it's just like, it just don't fucking miss. Movies, TV shows, comets. It, it, it just doesn't fucking miss. It's just the fucking best for some odd reason. With these turtles and their love for pizza and this damn rat. That they're all infected with some governmental ooze. Like, it just doesn't matter. It's that good. But let me calm down. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Well, all this being said, 2023 has been solidified as probably one of the best years definitely for animation, in my opinion. I had a really, really good time with some of the stuff I have watched and enjoyed. But please, tell me what you guys have liked and enjoyed in the comic section of 2023. And honestly, if you guys, like, I guess, I don't know. T tell me how good it is. I might try to make a video or something about it. But other than that, we always catch up it up in the comments anyway. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.